The following is presented by the Pinellas County Extension. Plants, just like people, come in different sizes and shapes with very different needs. Selecting the right plant for the right place means analyzing your site or property, then selecting plants that are suited for that specific site. Following these steps helps reduce landscape maintenance, such as watering, fertilizing, and the use of pesticides. And when considering what to plant, grouping plants according to their needs will help you create a low maintenance landscape. You want to match the plants to your site, meaning look at sun, shade, pH, that you choose plants that really match the site. Also, you want to look into drought tolerance, and also you want to maybe plant plants that attract wildlife. Limit the number of plants that need a lot of water or care. Also, keep only as much grass as you directly use for recreation or other purposes. Plant beds in most areas use much less water than grass. And remove invasive exotic plants so they don't steal water and nutrition from Florida-friendly plants. Having the right plant in the right place saves water and money while helping you create a healthier and more attractive Florida-friendly landscape. When it comes to irrigating your lawn, more isn't better. Just because it's your watering day doesn't mean you have to water. Water your lawn and plants only when they need it, which is when you observe signs of drought stress in your landscape. In fact, let your plants tell you when they need to be watered. You only need to water when the plants show signs of drought stress, which is uh, the grass. When you step on it, you see the grass blades don't come up again or the color changes to a bluish grayish color. And in the landscape, if you look at a plant, you might have an indicator plant. If that plant starts drooping, one of your plants in the landscape starts to droop. Yes, then it's time to water your landscape. Make sure that when you water, you're watering your yard and plants, and not the sidewalk or the street. And when it does rain, use a rain gauge or a moisture sensor so you'll know how much water your yard received. Install a drip or microspray system in your plant beds. They use water more efficiently than traditional spray heads. Install an automatic rain shutoff device so you can avoid watering during or after its rain. And consider using a rain barrel so you can collect water that you can use later to water your plants. Watering efficiently not only saves water and money, but it also helps create a healthier and more attractive landscape. When it comes to fertilizer, less is usually best. Overuse of fertilizers can be hazardous to your landscape and even pollute the environment. Over fertilizing can also aggravate pest problems and stimulate excessive growth, which then requires even more water. With fertilizers, use them only when needed, which is to maintain the health of your landscape. Most mature trees and shrubs don't need to be fertilized. If you decide to fertilize, Read the label instructions on the fertilizer bag and really follow these strictly. If you over fertilize, it will contribute to pollution. It will run off and it will leach into our groundwaters. When applying fertilizer, don't use a rotary spreader. Instead, use a drop spreader. Also, look for slow release fertilizer or fertilizers that have a high percentage of slow release nitrogen already in them. They're kinder to the environment and they last longer. Fertilizing appropriately not only protects the environment, but it saves water and money, helping you create a healthier and more attractive landscape. Keeping mulch on your plant beds will help you retain soil moisture by reducing evaporation, minimizing water needs for established plants. It also helps reduce soil erosion and stormwater runoff. In areas that are difficult to mow, irrigate, or maintain, consider using mulch as a replacement for turf or ground cover. 
Mulch is also good for those shady areas where plants don't grow as well. It also helps by suppressing weed growth. And when it comes to what type of mulch to use, there are a lot of good mulches available. One of them is the recycled yard waste that you can use that's free. You can get it within the county and it breaks down pretty quickly to become soil. Other good mulches are oak leaves that you find this time of the year in your yard. You can just leave them where they drop or you can use them, bag them up and use them in around your plants in your flower beds. Keep the level of mulch to two or three inches and you can do this by applying it once or twice a year. Don't pile mulch around a tree trunk or a plant stem as this can cause diseases. And to avoid creating an environment for pesky bugs, make sure you don't mulch all the way up to the edge of your home. Properly using mulch not only saves water and money, but it can also help create a healthier and more attractive landscape. It's fun to entertain visitors in your home, but what about on the outside? Friendly visitors like butterflies, birds, and beneficial insects will enjoy your landscape if you provide food, water, and cover. You can bring your yard to life for wildlife by practicing a few simple tips. Plant vines, shrubs, and trees that provide food, shelter, and cover for birds and butterflies and other wildlife. Also, a water source would be great, such as a fountain or a bird bath or a small pond. Providing a friendly habitat is important, but it's not enough. Make sure you maintain your yard so its impact on the environment is minimal. You can protect the health of your wildlife visitors by limiting pesticide use, spot treating only those areas that really need attention, and consider building wildlife shelter, such as a birdhouse, a bat house, or even a brush pile. When you think of your yard as a backdoor retreat for wildlife, you're not only creating a healthier and more appealing landscape, but you're protecting the environment. Now that's attractive and a lot of fun. When it comes to managing yard pests, an ounce of prevention is worth more than a pound of cure, especially when that cure involves improper use of pesticides. In fact, the unwise use of pesticides can harm people, pets, and the environment. And remember, not all insects are pests. Learn about the beneficial insects. They might do the job for you. Also, look at your plants on a regular basis, see if there's a problem, and take action as soon as you can. And if you use a method to um, get rid of the problem, use the least toxic method first. The way you design and maintain your yard either establishes a barrier against pests or it throws out a welcome mat. Putting a plant in a spot that's not ideal increases the chances you'll have to protect it from pests. So think before you plant. Go easy on fertilizer and water, as they can promote too much growth, making your plants more susceptible to certain insects and disease. Use pesticides only to spot treat affected areas avoiding blanket applications. Keeping your plants healthy is not only the best defense against pests, but it also protects the environment while creating a healthier and more attractive landscape. Common landscaping maintenance activities such as mowing, pruning, and raking generate yard waste that you can return to the soil, recycling valuable nutrients. Putting your yard waste back into your land and landscape is an easy and effective way to improve the fertility and water holding ability of the soil. Leave the grass clippings after you mow your grass and make good use of your leaves falling down from your trees. You can either rake them up and put them in your beds, or you can just let them self-mulch your areas under the trees. Another great way to supply your yard and plants with key nutrients while recycling yard waste is adding compost, which you can make from yard and kitchen waste. A compost bin allows you to easily utilize kitchen waste, such as vegetable and fruit scraps, eggshells, and coffee grounds. Compost is a great natural fertilizer, and it can make very good mulch. 
Recycling your yard waste and composting is not only efficient and more cost effective, but it protects the environment while helping you create a healthier and more attractive landscape. Water running off your landscape can carry pollutants, such as pesticides, excess fertilizers, soil, and debris, into ponds, streams, the bay, and ultimately our groundwater. A healthy, properly maintained yard is able to better absorb stormwater runoff. You can make every raindrop count by taking steps to ensure that rain that falls on your yard stays on your yard. Direct downspouts and gutters into your landscape to make good use of the water that's coming from your roof. You can also direct these gutters into a rain barrel or cistern to collect the water and use it later for watering your plants. You can use mulch, bricks, gravel or other porous materials for walkways or your patio. Be sure to clean up oil spills and leaks on your driveway. Picking up pet waste helps reduce bacterial and nutrient pollution. Sweep grass clippings, fertilizer and soil onto your lawn so they don't get washed into storm drains. The surface water in Florida is very sensitive to even small amounts of pollution. So remove trash from street gutters, even if it's not yours. Remember, what goes in your storm drain can easily find its way into our water sources. So help reduce stormwater runoff. It not only protects the environment, but it saves water and money, helping you create a healthier and more attractive landscape. Waterfront property, whether it's on a river, stream, lake, pond, or the beach, is a fragile natural treasure that contributes to our quality of life here in Florida. By following a few simple tips, waterfront owners can help protect and maintain these freshwater and marine ecosystems. Create a buffer zone with low maintenance plants around the pond or lake. Also keep in mind to stay away at least 10 feet with chemicals, pesticides, fertilizers, and so forth from the water's edge. Learn to identify invasive exotic plants like the Brazilian peppers and consider removing them. And never prune mangroves or remove any vegetation around a body of water without first getting the proper permits and guidance. When you protect the waterfront, you're not only protecting a natural treasure, but you're helping create a healthier and more attractive landscape. For more information on this and many more topics, visit www.pinellascountyextension.org.